I remember hearing it, the, the, the glass crack. That's the last thing I remember until I woke up in the ambulance. In 2018, Jason Sines was a comedian whose career was on the rise. But my hair is multifunctional, you know, because I look like a Bernie Sanders supporter from the front, but from behind, a young Hillary Clinton. You <laughs> I was feeling good and enjoying living in LA. Eventually got a really good social media job working with Steve Harvey, and I was able to afford to live by myself, and I felt like I was well on my way to having the career and the life I wanted in Los Angeles, for sure. He'd met a woman named Erin. I, I knew Erin through um, performing. I had asked her, uh, you know, out for a drink one time, and she told me she was dating somebody. And then when she broke up with that person, she asked if I was available, and I said yes. They went on two dates. Their third date was November 30th, 2018. I just got, he smelled good. Like, I just remember he smelled good. He had like, the sweater on that I had like seen in some of his Instagram pictures that I thought was so cute. And um, God, that sweater. Like, I just was like in love with him the second I saw him that night. Like I was like done. I was put a fork in me, I was done. We had gone out to see a show, came back to my apartment building and went up on the rooftop. I, I told her that you could kind of see the Hollywood sign. And in retrospect, I probably should have just made a move on her in my apartment, but instead we went up onto the rooftop. I've lived in LA at this point for, you know, nine years. I've seen the Hollywood sign. I don't care. <laughs> and so I say, I think you told me you had a great roof. Like, I think we need to go and see this great roof or whatever. And God, I wish I had not said that, but here we are. And we leaned up against a, a skylight together. Jason just kind of like leaned against it. And I didn't think twice about leaning against it with him. The next thing I knew, like as soon as my weight was added, the, the skylight buckled under us. I remember feeling it kind of like start to give. And before I could change anything, we were falling through the skylight. And we both fell through it. And I, you know, I don't think I was unconscious for long. I might have not been unconscious, but I do know I like opened my eyes kind of once we landed and I just had blood everywhere. And I, I would find out later I had like a gash on my head. I don't remember hitting, I don't remember falling. And I looked over at Jason and Jason was unconscious, unconscious and I, you know, just like, just honestly didn't know what was happening. Like what had just happened didn't make sense. I started screaming for help. Thankfully he has a really close knit, small apartment building and people came out and started to help and call 911. I don't even think he remembers this part, but he like, just like couldn't feel his legs. And I just remember thinking like, what, what are you talking about? Like that can't, be what he means. I had landed on the staircase and I got severely paralyzed at that moment. Jason was rushed to the hospital. After my spinal cord injury and the surgery to put my spine back in together, I was awake, I was texting friends. I was telling them that like, I got injured, but I'm in the hospital, I'm okay, I'm alive. Then his condition worsened. And then I developed spinal meningitis. And, and battled that for about a month in ICU. It got pretty scary um, with the swelling on my spine and my brain from the meningitis. And I don't remember that period at all. I remember like the last day I got to see him before the spinal meningitis really kind of hit him hard. He was really like uncomfortable that day. He was really like quiet. Like the next day that his family was like, please don't come today, he is not doing well. And that happened for, God, I really think it was like something like 40 days, like 30 to 40 days. I didn't get to see him at all. Where my memory starts to really come back was in rehab after the meningitis when I was slowly doing physical therapy and mental therapy, trying to come back. My brain was still very scrambled during that time. Well, I was I I ICU for 30 days. So that was probably till the end of 2018. And then I was in different rehabs until 
May of 2019. So six months. Like many performers, Jason didn't have health insurance. And we had to rely on GoFundMe. Thankfully, my friends and family came through. And so that first wave of bills, I, I was covered with that GoFundMe. Uh, DC, New York, and LA, they all put on a fundraiser on the same day for me. April 1st, 2019. It just moved my heart to know that all my friends through the decades that I've, I've been an adult and uh, trying to live my and do my career and the friends that have helped me get to where I am were, were helping me again. Man, meant, meant the world to me. It took Jason time to process his condition. Yeah, it was a slow burn for me the, the, to learn the impact of what this injury caused. The, like the gravity of me being paralyzed didn't hit until, until I think all my mental faculties had come back and I knew the severity of the injury. The entire time he was in the hospital, Aaron remained by his side. She started coming to see me immediately. Like when she was in the hospital, you know, the next couple of days, she came to see me. Um, you know, she ran across the hospital <laughs> uh, without permission to come see me. And I was in bad shape, unresponsive, not looking good. And I understand that. Um, but she, you know, never gave up. She kept trying. So I would text him every day. I would send him, you know, a, a, leave him a voicemail, something every day, just so he knew that I was still like there for him, thinking of him. And then I remember one day, it was in January, I got like, you can come see him. And I remember I was like, I was like, what time? I'll be, I'm on my way. Like, well, you know, and, and I had like a dress. Like I like picked out this like dress that I thought made me look cute. And I like, I like just, I went and got flowers. I like, just like tried so hard to just, and just be normal and cute. And he was just like, he was so skinny. Oh my God, he was so skinny. And he, he was so pale and he was so like small. And he still was trying to make like little jokes. And I could see like a glimpse of him still in there. And that was all I needed to know that like, at least I didn't know what we would be, but I was at least grateful that he was himself in there you know it was deep in there but he, it was in there she come to see me every sunday and we would go on rehab dates but at first i didn't know how i felt about her seeing me still like i'm sick and i'm injured and i'm in the hospital and i'm i weigh half what i used to weigh and i'm never gonna walk again like do i want her to see me like that Plus, she's meeting my parents for the first time. <laughs> you know, after just dating me for a month, now she's meeting my whole family and I'm in the hospital. It's like, it was heavy for her. On Easter, she hid Easter eggs in the courtyard for me to find. She really showed me a lot of love during that time. It was like one of the days where we were like on, we were on fire, like making jokes. And I was like, oh, he's here. Like, this is him. And I just remember he goes, he was like talking to himself, but he said it out loud. He was like, I'm going to do it. And he pulled himself up like a freaking movie out of his hospital bed. And he kissed me. And I was like, come on. I was like, we could have been doing this the whole time, man. Like what? Let's do it. I just knew like if, if I get out of rehab and I'm able to get my own place again, I want to keep a relationship with her. Up until that moment, like a really, really good date. We had a lot of fun together. And um, I've done a lot of therapy to forgive myself about deciding to go up on the roof that night. But I'm happy that I, I did it with Aaron, uh, with nobody else other than Aaron, because um, she stuck by my side. So we got to go kayak. And that just felt like the first time, like he drove. So he like drove with his like hand controlled car. Um, so I got to feel like, you know, I was being like taken care of, you know, in that way. And we kayaked and we, we have this like picture of us, like both like flexing. And 
I just remember like, I took a picture of him, like as he was like paddling and just like looking at that photo, that's to me, I just like saw like a man who had like kind of been to the end of like himself, like had gotten to be so frail, so small, he couldn't hold himself up. And then to see him like sitting up nice and tall, like arms like strong enough to kayak, arms strong enough to transfer him from the car to the chair, to the chair, to the kayak, to the kayak, back to the chair. Like to see how much strength he had gained. And he was like hot and happy. And we were outside and it was just like this like moment where I was like, everything is going to be okay and we can still have a beautiful life we can still like be ourselves and it takes a little extra work but we can make it happen and i think like that was the day that i was like we can have like a future he proposed in 2020 and so we said screw it let's get married at a courthouse I wouldn't have it any other way. It was such a, a nice and private and, and beautiful courthouse wedding. I really cherished that day. The hashtag for their wedding fell in love. I was like, honey, we gotta talk. We gotta talk about our hashtag. I was like, I know what it's gonna be, but I don't wanna say it. And he was like, let's hear it. And I was like, I fell in love. It's gotta, it's, there's nothing, there's no other, there's not a better one. There's just not, and I hate it, but that's where we're at. So anyways, that was the, <laughs> it is perfect. It is perfect, but yikes. Jason is still healing from his injury. It's always going to be an ongoing adjustment and it's still hard, but I'm still very grateful. I can feel that my bladder is like really, really full. And I got a piss really bad. Um, I can feel cramping in my hips. At the end of the day, from sitting in my chair all day, you know, the fun sensation. <laughs> I still have some sensation below my injury level and, you know, my hips and my feet and stuff. I can still feel like hot water. I can still, when, when the weather gets like this, this my hips hurt. Um, so I'm an incomplete spinal cord injury. And the doctor said, with that, the sky's the limit with the recovery you might have. I wasn't going to bet all my money that I was going to walk again or to, to believe that that was even a possibility. I wanted to learn how to be in a wheelchair the best I could and uh, go to rehab and be as strong as I can. He still battles with processing what happened. I'm always going to bump into my grief about being paralyzed in new and unexpected ways. Grief, I, I'm, I still suffer grief. I'm still grieving for the loss that I've had, the loss of my lower body and the function of my lower body. It's gotten better, but some days were really, really dark. Um, especially as I'm learning how to manage. Aaron does too. I had had have uh, a lot of guilt. Um, God, I used to like Jason and I, we love, we both love hiking. We both like, that was one of our first dates was hiking. And I still like, I still find myself like doing anything other than hike. You know, the other day we went to Santa Monica just to get out of our regular routine and see the water. And Jason just was like, you know, it's, I'll, I'm, it's crazy to me. I'll never feel like the sand between my toes. And I just cried because I can't. One way Jason processes things is through his comedy. This, this is a true story of a stand-up comedian who fell through a skylight and broke his back. Ah, so find out what happens when Jason stops standing upright and starts needing wheels. The Wheel World. Hollywood. Hey, I'm rolling here. I think it's in my DNA to use humor to get through tough times. And I think it, I believe it's the best medicine. I know it's the best medicine. I use handicapped stalls a lot. And I'll tell you, uh, before I was in a wheelchair, I used them too. 
<laughs> and I'm still doing that to this day with writing a show and performing it called The Wheel World. It's a one-man show I wrote. It's my story of becoming paralyzed. It's a story that I think people really resonate with. I think I've crafted the ability to toe the line, so to speak, between serious and humorous. And I think, I think that old uh, equation, tragedy plus time equals comedy. So every time I go into a, you know, like a public restroom and the handicap stall is occupied, I'm like, oh God, I'm about to roll into a nightmare. I do talk about having to catheterize myself to urinate. I do talk about how um, I can't get an erection. I talk about those things and I'm real about those things so that I can joke about those things. So I think, I, I hope I've done a good job of balancing the real brass tacks about my paralysis and my perspective on it all. In his show, Jason shares how his idea of manhood has changed. I want to be a father and I want to be a good husband, supportive husband to Aaron. And none of that has to do with my sexual gratification. That's completely taken off the table. Now I have to find, and I think I've already had that in my heart. I have to find gratification from being reliable to the people I love being there for the people I love, being capable for the people I love. I also had to change the fact that I can't do everything independently like I used to. It's harder for me. I can't reach up and grab stuff. I can't fix some things because I, I, I don't have the mobility for it. I'm not that type of man, but I can do what I can do. I can make sure that uh, we, we get the help if we need it. The pair is expecting their first baby. My wife is about to give birth to our daughter and there is some trepidation about thinking about being a new father when you're in a wheelchair. And, but we've been through so much. I've been through so much together. Me and Aaron have been through so much. Jason says he is grateful for what he has and what he's gained. I was asked, uh, like, if someone had a magic wand and could wave it over you and you'd be cured of your paralysis, but everything that's happened, everything you've received since you've been paralyzed, you'd have to give back. Would you do it? And I, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. This is my life now. I'm a, para, I'm a paraplegic man. And now I have a wife that's pregnant. And I'm very grateful for all these things. I'm so grateful for this. And we have two dogs on top of all that. Could I give this away just to walk again? I don't think I could. I've, I've worked too hard to accept and be grateful for the life I have now and I don't, I don't see it any other way. I really don't. And I'm, and I'm grateful for what I have today. To be grateful of the things, the blessings that you have in your life is so important. But even if they're small, please remember what you do have and, and what you're grateful for. That means the world. And, and hold on to that because it's, it's, it's gonna be tough. And the journey of paralysis is a full-time job. And it never ends. And if you're not grateful for what you have, you're going to go down a really, really dark place. So be grateful and tell the people you love that you love them. And uh, get paralyzed in a warm climate like I did in California, if you have the chance. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Andreas Wendell.